Someone told me point blank flat. This CV will not get you any meaningful job. No way or no chance would I even want to employ you with this. Um, I don't want to sound scary, but I applied for more than a thousand jobs. When you get onto an excellent network, they connect you with the network of higher reading or same resonance, whereby you just catch that same frequency and you keep matching on and higher. At least when people are tempted to press or scroll on their phone, I for once can get back to being disciplined and see that this is the system and structure I've set for myself. I was being told that it wasn't going to be an easy ride to get a job here. I was mega prepared. So whatever one's hand finds doing, do it mm -hmm. well. On this particular episode of how I got here, I had to travel down to Edinburgh to meet with Emmanuel. Now, you don't get to meet a scholar and an energy engineer quite often. So when you do, you just grab the opportunity just to know what makes them tick. Emmanuel gained a scholarship to study at Imperial College in London, which is the second best university in the world as at the time we filmed this particular episode. Emmanuel, who also finished with a first class from Covenant University for his bachelor's, a university also rated among the top three universities in Nigeria. Emmanuel's journey started with just a phrase from one of his professors back in Nigeria. It was one particular phrase my university professor said that energy is life. Now the funny thing is, Emmanuel's path to success wasn't really a straight one as I might have described. <laughs> this is a spoiler for anyone that thinks there is um, a relative comparative advantage to have earned that scholarship. But it was one marked with determination and a willingness to learn from every setback. This is the story of Emmanuel Atiba on how I got here. Started way back, say 2015. It was one particular phrase my university professor said that energy is life. And that phrase stuck with me for a very long time up till today. And it's what inspired me to pick up a career in energy, particularly after starting with mechanical engineering. And for those who might not have known me yet or watching this video for the first time as it will be, I was born and bred in Lagos, oh. Lagos, Nigeria. Had good um, parents that valued education and going into university at that point, yeah. my dad said, um, I think it could be architecture because you really aced your drawings. You were very good with technical drawing. And yes, I knew that. But at the same time, within me, I didn't know I would tell him I wanted to study aeronautic <laughs> engineering. Is there an aeronautic school in Asia? <laughs> no. But I didn't know what to do after graduating. Okay. So, okay, by the grace of God, finished with first class. And what was next? In Nigeria, we do something called NYSE for those that are not indigenous. Yeah. Through that, I, I did that in a university environment. And I worked with another university professor who was able to understand my level of service. He said, Emmanuel, I see something in you in that you have a very good work ethic. Can you just keep to that and that will help you on your next phase in life? He signed many recommendation letters to help me and yes, he signed one to which I could go to Stanford, but then I got rejection. That was Upon other series of rejections I had um, applying to U.S. schools, in case of Stanford, it was rejection three years in a row. In this case of MIT, it was a rejection twice in a row. I even tried Harvard. I was just shooting for the top ten. I I don't I wanted the best, and that was how hungry I was. And for those that shoot out for something very elite, something mega, the on the, the bigger the price, the um, I had the risk in itself. The importance of mentorship was a turning point in his journey. Having someone to lean on, someone to ask questions, and someone to learn from was invaluable. It became clear to Emmanuel that mentorship is more than just advice, it's a lifeline. One don't know how one looks till there is a mirror to reflect that. And those best mirrors to reflect are someone who is actually gone ahead that knows and can diagnose what what kind of fault are present that first university professor that said energy is life happens to still be there and he said oh emmanuel i'll mentor you onwards 
I might have made reference to my mentors. That's another element of network. Even up till now, the same way I have mentees is the same way I have mentors because I need them to actually give me a reflection as to what I need to improve on and what information is and where I should be pointing to look for them. The value thing with my mentors is, I always ask one question, is it possible Upon every one of our goals that can also add this critical piece, can you help me with being more accountable whereby I share my time audit of things I've done in the past months and when we pick up in this new month such that we create a trail for advancement. And his mentorship was great in helping me to take my core base in research. An opportunity came by from a lecturer that saw me working overnight in the research lab. And he came over to me, he said, I said, but do, have you ever heard of PTDF scholarship? I said, um, no. It closes this night. Whoa. I think you'll be a strong candidate for that. <laughs> and um, fortune favors the prepared. Given that I submitted previous um, applications to mm. US universities. Mm -hmm. So I had draft applications that got me ready in space of those few minutes that was counting down to the close up of the um, scholarship duration. There's a book I read not long ago, it's about showing your work. Mm. And the whole ethos around the book was, your work doesn't speak for itself, but however, you should have a way of ensuring people get awareness about your capabilities and things you've done. So that's exactly what manifested when that lecturer came and met me and mm. said, oh, Emmanuel, do you know PTDF scholarship? Apply for this. He knew that I was actually looking for the next opportunity. I got admission to study at Imperial College. That masters itself has positioned me in this country for almost five years now. Wow. Now, after earning a scholarship to study at Imperial College London, Emmanuel realized that academia was only one part of the equation. It wasn't just technical skills that would define his career. It was the relationships he built along the way. <laughs> this is a spoiler for anyone that thinks there is um, a relative comparative advantage to have earned that scholarship. But, well, studied in a um, prestigious university like Imperial in that case for me. Uh, I still went through that every honors to polish my skill sets and show my best self during job interviews. <laughs> Um, I don't want to sound scary, but I applied for more than a thousand jobs before I got job offers. And then someone told me point blank, flat, this CV will not get you any meaningful job. I was grateful to find someone that told me point blank the way I would receive it. That no way or no chance would I even want to employ you with this CV. Why? Structurally formatting was out of this place. And I did recognize that, okay, let me get back to the drawing board, put CVs better. And I, I had a mock interview with someone. During this mock interview, he said, consider something about uh, around getting a job. It's like you're walking through the high street and you want to make a purchase. If you have a very good CV, that CV is likened to how attractive that um, shop looks like. If your CV is not so attractive with every bit of skills, qualifications, certifications, take them being shown in the forefront of the shop, there is no chance of you having to get into that shop itself. And he don't know me, I said, ah, oh, actually there's sense in this. Then he, he took it a bit further with that analogy and he said, now, if you get past the stage of a CV, you've been called for an interview. So it means actually that shop is well decorated. Now they, they want, they've gotten your attention, then they want to see how good those items you have in stock are. That's what interview does. And um, I took that analogy and piece so well. And he said, now with this mock interview, I want you to go meet other of your friends that you are in this same process of looking for jobs. Have tons of mock interviews to get yourself prepared with answering questions, facing cameras, knowing your body cues and languages. That was what helped to get past that ordeal of knowing how to surmount interviews 
and get job offer in itself. Networking wasn't just about building contacts, it was about building relationships. Through these connections, Emmanuel gained opportunities, insights, and the confidence to keep moving forward, even when things didn't go as planned. Did meet interesting people, um, people that offered opportunities, and I was ready to listen to those opportunities and grab them. Those opportunities, I would say, are stepping stones to what I am at the moment in my four or five years of career working in the energy sector. A good friend of mine would say, your net worth is your network. And jokingly, we laugh around it. And they said, well, is my network making me like Jeff Bezos? As I said, not yet. Whenever I meet with people, I, um, I get purpose from our conversation. And it's usually deep in that we know that we've talked on something tangible whereby when we meet, we can always pick up where we are. And I create a memory that stays on with them. How I pick many of my network comes through volunteering. On my LinkedIn profile, I've got as many volunteering, as much as publications, for example, or as many as almost four times job places I've worked it because I understand that doing something for others always brings the best from someone and you mentioned some professional network like BPE, Black Professionals, um, Europe Black Professionals, UK, um, on my engineering aspect, um, AFB, Association for Black um, Minority Engineers, these are groups and uh, network, professional network that has helped to solidify my not just my personal growth, but professional growth in itself. In a similar manner, being part of that professional institution also provides avenues to find the job vacancies that are not yet even sometimes public. It's good to now to work your network to identify that you need something more to help employers see the good in you. I discovered that my CV had more weight when I included a member of IMECI, member of IET, member of energy institutes. These are all professional um, engineering bodies. And it's like a ripple effect. When you get onto an excellent network, they connect you with a network of higher reading or same resonance whereby you just catch that same frequency and you keep matching on and higher so a network will always plant another seed for you to find another seed that would always germinate so every network always leaves me with something that's the whole core of that message today imana continues to thrive in the energy industry with a passion for helping others navigate the same challenges he once faced his story is a reminder that while technical expertise is vital, mentorship, networking and the ability to rise from rejection can unlock doors to new possibilities. Currently, it's emotional intelligence. Um, if I were to add more chips to it, it's my core values, basically. So, um, my core values have helped to get me up in the morning. It's helped to help me see my true North Star. I, I met a chip in this last story, um, discipline. Discipline is a core piece. Sometimes I feel so tired and not wanting to do some things I really want to go to. But with discipline, I'm able to follow through on my systems. For anyone wanting to understand that, they're in a particular stage right now where things might not look like it's forthcoming. It's like that story of the bamboo tree, right? When that work shows in, keep watering that plant, keep watering that plant. For me, it's true, keeping true to my core values. And I've been able to see I'm a shining light at the moment. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm so glad that I've had people around to also share in that beautiful part of my journey. For Emmanuel, the journey is ongoing. And with every step, he proves that perseverance paired with the right connections can turn setbacks 
into stepping stones to success. And that's it guys on this particular episode of how I got here, where we continue to share stories that inform, inspire and educate. Do not forget to subscribe to this channel, like our video, share our videos, drop your thoughts in the comment section and turn on the post notification for new updates. To the next video, do not forget to stay safe. Have a good one guys. Cheers.